And uh, we don't want to offend her and have her turn around and go home. Oh, she's like talking a piano and suckling a pig. That woman's nuts. Who <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, come in in a minute and review Beavis and Butthead for us. Also, we've got backstage passes. we got Tori Amos coming in on the world-famous K-Rock. 826. The Lampa Theater. Night number one. Feature Garbage. Seventh annual K Rock almost to Christmas. We have more tickets that you can win to party in the pit with us coming up in a few minutes. The Cradle. On K Rock. Tori Amos is in the house. Off the hook. Yes, it is. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. <laughs> Bring her in next. 8.57 on K Rock. 9 o'clock. With Tori Amos. Hello, Tori. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Hey, Bean. Hey, how you been? Really good. You look so well rested. Yeah. No, you don't feel well rested. <laughs> no, I do feel well rested. I was expecting—I don't know why—I uh, was expecting you to just come dragging your, you know, your bushy tail in here today. But you look uh, like an old dog. Yeah. Well, because I, I know <laughs> because every guest we have goes, "Oh, this is so early. I can't right. believe." And I know what a year you've had. I mean, I know how busy you've been, and I've just figured, man, the last thing you feel like doing is another damn radio interview. But you <laughs> come in here, and your eyes are clear, and you just—you look terrific. I have my granola. Yeah, you're going morning. good. Is that the key? That's to... why I'm late. <laughs> Sorry, but you know priorities. You gotta eat your granola. I know. You gotta eat. Now, I know. You, you were just telling us during the song that you're uh, you're essentially done for '96, right? Done. This tour was how long? 187 shows. Oh my god! In how many days? From February. 14. From yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From February 23rd till November 11th. How many countries you Isn't it a bit sick that I know all this information? Yes, yeah. it is. Well, you've probably uh, been really counting the days toward it, toward the end, toward it being over. Funny, but you count in the middle. Really? In the middle is when you count. Near the end, you realize you're near the end, so it's no big yeah. deal? Yeah, it's very, it's it's sort of like a divorce. You know when it's when it's really happening? Right. <laughs> and you you know the lawyers are going to come and collect and the whole thing, and he's taking the truck, and you know. Uh -huh. I mean, it's really going to end. <laughs> but in the middle, you kind of go, Jesus. This is forever. Yeah. How many countries you play this time? Don't know. Can't. No. Just that, all that is, everywhere though. That isn't in my. Name the cities in alphabetical order. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we want the name of each person who paid to see you this year. <laughs> That's right. This is, uh, Was this tour any different from previous tours? I think I had more fun mm -hmm. because I wasn't. Um, I wasn't like. It was the loudest swallow I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't like Scarlett O'Hara on this one before. You know, my whole life was falling apart. Maybe it was because I was bored and I needed, I needed to stir it up a little bit. But this time, I really just enjoyed playing. Mm -hmm. I think this being the third world tour, you know, you let's be very honest with each other. The novelty goes, so you better right. like it. Right. The yeah. whole idea about, well, this is exciting and it's the first time and people are really coming to hear my music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you get over that very quickly. Right. You're yeah. still appreciative of it, but it doesn't have the novelty. Now it's about you either love playing or you don't. Mm -hmm. And because it's not about the excitement or, you know, you're in a new city and you're... Do you, you know. get the shot of adrenaline when you go on stage anymore? Or is it just Every night. You do? Really? Oh, yeah. A lot of performers come in and they tell us that that is still the best hour of the day is the one when they're on stage. It's yeah, the best hour. Yeah. It's the best hour of my life. That's why my relationships usually don't go so well because I always, I mean, the guys are great and everything, but... There's, it's just a whole different thing when you walk in front of 5,000 people and they're giving you this feeling than this cute piece standing in front of you. It's like, honey. <laughs> Nothing personal. But. Yeah, but. <laughs> well, you also. Grow a little. <laughs> you also benefit from a different kind of relationship with your audience than, say, not to name any names, but if you're better than Ezra, you're not getting the same <laughs> feedback that you would be if you're Tori Amos. You know what I'm saying? I'm I mean, very your lucky. Your fans are just being, great. I'm, I mean, I'm lucky in that. When other musicians come to my shows, they'll go, Jesus, Tori, can I borrow your audience? Right. Yeah. Because they they are kind of a benchmark for, I'm sorry, but they're the best. Mm -hmm. They really have come to hear music, and it's not about one song. It's about, you know, they're not there for the hors d'oeuvres. Right. They're there for the whole thing. Yeah, right. We were just talking uh, earlier. When we got here at 5 o'clock this morning, there were people downstairs waiting just to say hi to you. That's well, devotion that you well, don't see to most musicians. A lot of them, you know, on the tours... There would be people that would um, come for about 30 or 40 shows. You know, you, you have your regulars. You say, hey, Dorothy, how's it going? <laughs> really? Then there's the guy with the steel tip boots and the tattoos and the fairy wings. You know him. He would Absolutely. show up. I remember him when we did the House of Blues show. Jess is the name, too. <laughs> you know, you just you start to get to know some of them. And 
You know, in 20 years, you're going to be like Barry Manilow. You're going to have the same audience that just follows you around from place to place. Watch it, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we want to uh, we got to take a break. We're so happy to see you again. We want to find out what else you've been up to, find out what, uh, what you're interested in, just find out what's new. We want to talk a little bit about your charity because of all the charities that we have talked about the last few weeks about the acoustic Christmas shows this weekend. Yours is a charity that, I mean, you're the artist most closely identified with any of the charities on the bill because you founded it. You founded Rain, and we want to talk a little bit about that so people know where their money is going and just kind of catch up with Tori Amos. And we have a bunch of phone calls, too, already on hold that would like to ask you some questions, if you wouldn't mind. Tori Amos is here. It's 9.05 on K-Rock. You ever hear of a wrestler named uh, Gentleman Jerry Valiant? You a wrestling fan? <laughs> I can answer that for Tori. <laughs> Probably not, no. Anyway, he wrestled for a long time, like 25 years, and uh, he's retired now working part-time as a shopping mall Santa in Indiana. Indiana, He loves it and says the other day a young boy who didn't have long to live came up and hugged him. And after he picked the kid up over his head and body slammed him, he almost started crying. <laughs> that is absolutely not true. That's K-Rock Sports. I'm Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. It's K-Rock QFM Pasadena, Los Angeles, the world-famous K-Rock. Tori Amos is with us. We said, Tori, what song should we play? Well, I think we should do a little wake-up. This is a song called Professional Widow. Please enjoy, won't you, on the world-famous K-Rock. Say, 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 uh, honey, bring it close to my lips. Yeah. She 
It's the world's famous K Rock, 106.7 K Rock Q. Tori Amos actually uh, going through the, uh, you were air guitaring your own music there for a second. Yeah. Now, Tori, when we ask you which song to play, I have to be honest when I say I wasn't familiar with that particular song. And the F word in that particular song. Which Kevin, we're, which you we're guys got to relax a little bit. <laughs> well, you we're it's relaxed. Not, it's not our regulation story. Look, whoever it is, tell them to call me. They've got to relax a little bit. <laughs> All right. All right, there's these five old guys, <laughs> and they they have a little group they call the Federal Communications Commission. Do they drink martinis? I don't know. You know, have a come, and I'll play. I've been around the world in a plane. I had a revolution in space. See, now they would love that. Yes. Yeah, but see, tell them to come over. We'll play a little piano bar music and discuss this. They Tori. need to relax. Why, do you, have funny, to, why do you have to work blue, Tori? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. They don't come to us and say, Kevin and me, how should we relax? <laughs> no, they sure it doesn't don't. seem to be one of their... So we apologize to anybody that's that offended, but we like Tori Amos, so... If Tori right. tells us to play it, we play it. Right. Although, not again. I mean, we wouldn't again if she told us to play it. <laughs> we certainly learned our lesson this time. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? There's a, just a level of poetry. Poetic license. Right. There's just certain right. words that you can't, you know, replace. Funny. While we're talking about licenses, that's what we're going to lose, Tori. <laughs> and then the next time you come to town, right. we will not be available for you to broadcast. Here's, here's on. the part that you're missing. We're with you. Okay. We I see take, things look, the way you see I things. I take full responsibility. Kevin and Bean had no idea what this was. And you know what? This is the way I see it. The idea here is... This should be good. <laughs> no. This, this is really how I see things. Uh-huh. I see myself as a writer. Mm -hmm. I see myself as, you know, if you don't want to listen to this, turn the station. Right. That's great advice for our audience. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> we especially enjoy that. No, but Tori, we like it. We're, okay. we're fine with it. Okay. And, and let me tell the audience something that uh, I didn't know until you told me. That was a number one dance record. There was a remix, and it was number one dance record in the world. Last thing you expected was to ever be a number one dance artist? Disco slut, baby. There you Last go. Last thing I expected. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'll take some phone cool. calls. We have. Uh, yeah, you need to put your headphones on. We want okay. to take some uh, take some calls. You got a volume control down there. But try to control your potty mouth. Is that possible, <laughs> or is that part of your freedom of expression? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, Erica. Hello, Erica. Hi. Hi, you're on with Tori Amos. Oh gosh, I am so excited. I have a question to tell you, or ask you actually first. But um, I wanted to tell you, I'm actually doing a presentation on you today, so I'm really glad that I got a chance to talk to you. Well, I might be in the jail, oh, really? so come find me. No, no, they don't, they don't care about you. It's us they're taking down. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of presentation are you doing? Um, actually, I'm in a women in music class, and um, we had to do a presentation. Well, we had to do a report, and she's my favorite artist. So. <laughs> and, and what are you going to say about Tori? How does, it, how does it work? Do you talk about specific songs or what? Well, um, I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about her life and about how she's been influential to a lot of women. And, and she's a real positive female artist, so... <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Do, nice. you, do you play welcome. yourself? Are you a musician? No, I'm not. I'm an artist. A drawing artist? Yes, an illustration artist. Do you put the F word in every painting you make? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's what we need you to do. Put her on hold for one second. Okay. Put her on hold for one second. All right. Here's the deal, Tori. We have a, one pair of tickets left today for, for the show this weekend, for Friday night. I think it's for Friday night, right? Yeah. Yeah, for Friday night show to see you. We're going to take all these calls, and we want you to pick someone to get the tickets to. I know it's hard. I know it's hard because you hate to choose between your kids, but we only have one pair we have to give away. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, it's See, horrible for us to do to you, Justin. Then, then you know what I'm going to do? We're going to have to write their names down, and then I'm going to have to pick them out of a hat because I, I can't. Do you you know can't choose? I mean? Okay, we can do that. No, we can I, do that. That's I fine. That's Why do you think I'm still single? <laughs> <laughs> can't make decisions? All right, so that's what we'll do. So we'll take down your name no, and phone I make, number. No, Kevin, I make too many decisions. I that's see. Got it. So someone that talks to Tori on the air this hour, we'll make it everybody we talk to while Tori's here, will win the ticket. That's how we'll do it. We'll just do it randomly from your fans because they'll All get right. to see you Friday night. I'd like them to know that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Catherine. Yes. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Catherine. How are you, Tori? I'm really well. How are you? I'm very happy to be talking to you. Um, I have been a fan of yours for years, and I admire you so much for the way you've overcome what you've been through, because I've been through a lot of the same stuff you have, and listening to you for, like, all these years have helped me, like, a lot. And um, I just want you to know, I, I really admire you. You're one of my role models. Well, I just want you to know, Catherine, that we're doing the 800 line. We can talk about sure, this. Yeah, this is a good time, I, actually. I know what she's referring to. Sure. Um... Rain is the Rape Abuse Incest National Network, and the number is 1-800-656-HOPE. Mm -hmm. And I've joined forces with um, Calvin Klein. Oh, really? he, he's come to help out Rain. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is um, in, in mid-January, we're doing a, a show on Lifetime Television, uh -huh. which will kick off a whole campaign. And if you want to be a volunteer for Rain, because you know, they need people to help out on the phone line, it'll really be going, I think, in January. 
Even yeah. though the number's working now, we're just kind of gearing up. Right. So now, what happens if a girl calls? What uh, what do you, what can you do for them? I understand it. It's somehow they call this number, but it's tied into their own city that they're calling from. Is that right? What happens is you you uh, call this number and you get a main switchboard, and then that will um, direct you to the closest rape crisis center near you. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, their questions. To, for instance, somebody will say, "Okay, I'm 15 years old. The perpetrator's in the household. Um, what are my rights?" What can I legally do to get out of this? Because, you know, how, how can I survive without being on the street? Right. So things like that, things like I need counseling. Or uh, just knowledge and information. Yeah. Or I need to see a doctor or what's happening to me or I'm, I'm depressed and, and I can't wake up in the morning and, and leave the house. Mm -hmm. So what can I do? And RAIN is really about helping to take you to your next step. It's kind of like the emergency room. Yeah. So, Catherine, the whole thing is... Um, January 24th, when this airs, there'll be, uh, you'll call the, this number, uh -huh. and you'll be able on your menu, if you want to be a volunteer, uh -huh. there'll be a certain button you can push, and you'll be helping a professional in your area. And it doesn't have to be all the time, and it's guys, too, if you want to help, if you feel like, um, you know, you, you want to be involved, you'll be helping somebody that's, that's um, trained. That would be great. I have one more question for you. Um, when do you plan on going on tour through the L.A.? Or <laughs> Don't Austin? even ask her that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> really? Friday night. No, I'm doing well, I, know a, I can't go to Friday's show, though. <laughs> this is the last show, really, for a while. After the benefit, I'm kind of... Um, Oh, really? I'm You're good. toast, aren't you? I'm, I'm over. Yeah. yeah for, for a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, Catherine. Hey, thanks, okay? Be sure to give us your name and phone number. All right. All right. That number, by the way, that Tori mentioned for, uh, and it's January 24th on Lifetime TV. It's uh, yeah. taped the day before, though. Yes. Is 1-800-656-HOPE to help or if you need if you need help. Yeah, right. It's called RAIN, and this is one of the uh, charities that Friday night's proceeds right. are benefiting. One All of right. the reasons we wanted to have you in. Let's take a quick break and come back. we got a bunch more calls, Tori, if you don't mind. Fine. Okay. Okay. 921. It's KROQ. Tori Amos is with us at 924. The unpredictable and dangerous Tori Amos is in the studio with us. <laughs> we are gonna take, uh, we're going to take a bunch more calls at 1-800-520-1067. Uh, we want to play some more Tori music while she's here. Although your album has been out for a while now, you still have new music coming out like this thing we're about to play. What uh, What's this all about? What can you tell us about it? Well, my friend BT called me up and he goes, um, Tori, I have this track and just do whatever you want. So it was during a sound check a few months ago, and we were running late, and, you know, the union guys were standing around huffing and puffing and and uh, frowning and, you know, just being sure. all together uncheerful. Right. And so I put my headphones on, and I started listening to the track, and it was so depressing. I just sort of made up this thing, blue sky in my head, and I just started singing. And I kind of, you know, finished the thing, and I went, well, that sucked. And I said, Brian, look, I really tried, but I don't think it's any good. And he calls me back. He goes, I really like this tour. So I said, well, knock yourself out. And how, how can you buy this? It's on his album, or oh, is yeah, it just a single? Is, or? No, this is coming out on BT's album. On BT's album. He, right. And he's a lovely person. And okay. it's called Blue Skies on K-Rock. <laughs>
Famous K Rock 106.7 K Rock Q. That is BT in Blue Skies with Tori Amos on uh, vocals. 929. Hey, uh, Tori, we had a listener call us yesterday when uh, we had mentioned that you were going to be in, and they wanted me to ask you about the Jawbox cover version of Cornflake Girl that's out. I have not heard it yet. Have you? Yeah, I have heard it. How it's, is it? Well, you know what? The great thing about it is when you have a band that um, covers one of your songs and their style's so different from you, I get a new perspective on the song myself. It's really the greatest compliment that can happen as a writer when somebody else wants to do your work, especially when they have a different take on it. Mm -hmm. Have you been covered much? No. Some artists are tough to cover. Not really. Yeah. I mean, I hear that there's this um, transvestite down in Florida named Daisy Dead Petals, <laughs> <laughs> which is after one of my B-side songs. <laughs> and they say she's fantastic. She does me better than I do. I said, really? You know, if you're, kind, sad, if you're really. gaining a little weight to her, you know, you start getting <laughs> slovenly, right? you need to get this babe in there because he, she is really Terrific. fantastic. You, you have always had great taste in uh, cover versions, too. And I want to mention, while we're talking about new product that you have out, your fans know this, but that VH1 Crossroads album, you do a terrific cover of I Am On Fire, the Bruce Springsteen song. Thank you. You did a really nice job with that, too. So let's take some more calls. Do you mind? I don't mind. one 800 520 you got to put those headphones back on if you want to talk to Tori in uh, our remaining time. All right, Lisa, good morning. Hey, I'd like to say hi to Tori, first of all. How hi. are you doing? Hi, is this Lisa? <laughs> yes, this is Lisa. Okay. Hey, I wanted to lay some admiration on you. First of all, I think that, you know, your work with Rain is really a godsend because we can't really appreciate how many people have gone through such a life-changing experience and that you offer such a, oh gosh, I'm so nervous, such a release for them, you know, so, such a relief because I know, you know, I have a friend who really has gone through a lot um, as regards to this and... There's one question I really want to ask you. With your music, is it an emotional release, your music that you make for you, because of what you've been through? Um, I think I understand things better after I write a song. Yeah. A lot of times I really don't know. It helps you work through it yourself? Yeah, I begin to see what I'm really thinking. Yeah. You know, because there's the outward way that you think you should think. Yeah. And you think you should feel about something. And then all of a sudden, there's some green pea sound starts coming out of your ears and your mouth. And you go, oh, that's it, I really think. <laughs> and then you kind of get beyond that and you go, God, you know, I really didn't want to admit that I cared so much about this. Or you kind of go, you know, I'm really a bit nasty. <laughs> I mean, there's a part of me, you know, I've been a bit evil to this girl. Right. So I think what's important is that it's a place where you can kind of um, take the veils away and the cobwebs and you sort of get to those cute little spiders, <laughs> see what's going on. I mean, I, the one thing I just want to say about rain mm -hmm. is that the whole idea of it, it's not to people that are uncomfortable hearing about it. Mm -hmm. I just want to say this is about healing. Yeah. It's it's about you come in once the first step really of healing is you acknowledge that um, something has happened. has happened to you. Yeah. And, you know, it's not about judging what the event is because a lot of people say to me, well, you know, a friend of mine went through being put in an oven and beaten for 10 years of their life and I really don't feel like I have any right 
And you know, right. you can't start judging your experience. Yeah. If it's affected you, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's, this isn't like I've said the Billboard chart 100 of who <laughs> ranks yeah. in experiences it's not here. not a competition. Yeah. yeah, it's not competitive. Yeah. So if something's affected you and you don't feel like um, you've been heard mm -hmm. and you need to talk to somebody and you want it confidential because you don't want your friends going, well, you know, that's nothing or that's not yeah. this or... Or just, oh, I'm so sorry, but get on with your life and mm -hmm. shut up. Yeah, you know, it, you, you, there is a place where you can go, and I think that's what Rain's about. Yeah, that's that's why I really appreciate it, because, you know, my friend has heard a lot of that. A lot of, you know, we'll get over it. It happened a long time ago, and it's really difficult for her. And I mean, she's, she has a lot of nightmares even to this day, and it's really... People don't get over some of these things their whole lives. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about rape, incest, and abuse, between, yeah. I mean, th between the three of those, it affects so many more people than I think most of us realize. I think what, what we have to just kind of understand here is that that's part of your weave. It, it is part of your tapestry, what makes your life. You, you don't have to pretend that it never happened but the idea is when you're working with people that really know how to take you to your next step right. is that it's not all you are it's not controlling your life it does make you see life differently when you've been in an abusive situation it will make you see things differently right. and it will make you act differently because you either pour more, uh, pull more abusive situations to you or you become abusive or both so it's really important to go okay hang on a minute this isn't a bad thing that i have to admit this to myself it's a it's a strength to be able to say there's something here in my heart that's really hurting that's uh, very well put. Hey, we appreciate the call. Hey. Did you someone know, take down your phone number? Can I have number? one more thing? Oh, we got, pl we got uh, Please, plenty of people who have many, many questions. Hold on, and we'll take down your phone number, and then we'll uh, do a drawing for tickets for uh, Party in the Pit on Friday Thanks, night. Lisa, okay? Yes, thank you. Uh, Erica, hello. Hi, I just want to say good morning to Kevin and Bean and Tori. Hi. I just want to say, Tori, you have to come in every day. We've never had so many women calling us. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Usually we get, hey, come me. <laughs> Let me talk to Bertram. <laughs> this is so cool. Erica, what are you calling about? Well, first of all, I just had a, basically a comment. I wanted to let Tori know what an amazing inspiration she is to me. Um, I'm a writer, too, and whenever I have writer's block or anything, I just put on one of her CDs, and it helps me. Can you just steal some of her lyrics? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a different kind of writer than that, but... Also, I wanted to let her know that I have a um, an English professor in college, a man who's 70 years old, and he just thinks you're great, Tori. He loves your music, and he's tried to incorporate some of it into um, a class that I'm taking that's on the history of rock and roll, and he just thinks you're just an amazing performer. Where does he teach? Um, I go to Cal State San Bernardino. Oh, I love 70-year-old Englishmen. Yeah, great. <laughs> Tori is dating John Gilgood. I don't know if you knew that or not. It's not in all the tabloids yet, but I can no, break the news. I really, I, I really love um, s some of those wonderful literature professors. They're, they're just a wealth of information, and they have so many stories, and they've got so much wisdom. And they have the jackets with the patches on the elbows. And those yeah, are but we love that. That's a good look. And the pipe. <laughs> tell, tell him if he ever wants a good cup of tea, I'll try. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he's 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 borrowed a bunch of my videos and my CDs because he just thinks you're wonderful. We'll send him a big hi. I will. Okay. Th thanks, Erica. Thank you. Hold on. You uh, do I have this wrong? Have you spent some time living in England too? Yes, six years. Six years. You've been on and off. You still live there, or do you live yes, nowhere? Yes, I do. Right? Yeah. Well, I live nowhere, but whenever I need to kind of hang out, mm -hmm. I go hang out there. How famous are you in England? You know, it's, it's... Is it about the same? About the same yeah, in America? It's, it's fine. So it's not like you live there to kind of get away from everything. You just... My friends are in England. Right. I mean, I've... I, after being there for six years, I think I've developed kind of a, a bit of a home. Mm -hmm. But I uh, I always hear uh, from celebrities that live over there that the that it's a little easier to, to be famous there than it is here. People, they just approach it differently. They, um... Because they're more reserved. Right. You know... I mean, it's just one of those things. A Martian could kind of walk in the tube and everybody go, Oh, is that a green thing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look. Don't say anything. I'm going to read my paper. And you know, they, they just, you know, there could be a gorgeous naked woman standing there and everybody would just be sitting there. Well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> no, no. There is a, there is a reserve. Definite reserve, yeah. Yeah. Are, am I being told that she needs to go? Do you need to go? Is that the story? That's the story. No, the train's leaving with the Martian and the naked woman on it. <laughs> so we have to we have to say goodbye to you then until, well, we have to until draw, Friday night. We have to draw. We have to draw the winner. All right, Cortland's got the little piece of paper right there. And they're four, four right? Okay. Four mix colors. them up. Mix them up. These are the people. Sorry, if the... you don't know what order they're in, what does it matter if they're mixed up? <laughs> no, because it's like Vegas. It's like cards. So you do it properly. Okay. All right. All right. Okay.
This, yeah, this means Tori hates oh, all the people who didn't really win. Hard. <laughs> That's what this means. <laughs> she hates this. And it's... who's the winner? Lisa. Is Lisa still on the phone? Uh, I don't think so. Is she still on the phone? I don't know where she is. We'll, we'll call her back. We have her phone number. All right. Do you, uh, are, you, are you down with the bill on Friday night? You know who you're playing with at Universal Friday night, Tori? Have you heard? I think I Because I'm going to tell you and yeah. I'm going to tell Lisa and everyone listening. Night number one of K-Rock's 7th Annual Almost Acoustic Christmas features Tori Amos, also Fiona Apple, Tracy Bonham, The Cardigans, Cheryl Crow, Garbage, Jewel, Poe, Natalie Merchant, and Sarah McLaughlin. All on one bill. That is a phenomenal lineup. Tickets will go on sale tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at uh, the usual places. In fact, we can fill you in on all that information later in the half hour if you want. And the proceeds are uh, going to rain. Some of the proceeds are going to rain. So Yeah, that's great, guys. So Friday night we'll see you, and uh, it's been a real delight to catch up again. Thanks, guys. Thanks, okay. Tori. I'll Thanks. see you soon. 938. Right. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. The good news is everybody. You're not going to have to camp out in the rain to buy tickets to K Rock 7th Annual Almost Acoustic Christmas. Because someone invented random priority wristbands. Yes, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Tickets go on sale for both nights of K Rock 7th Annual Almost Acoustic Christmas. And they hand out wristbands at 5 p.m. No lineups before 4. You might want to bring an umbrella, though, just in case. Or you can stay home and charge your tickets by phone. Merry Christmas! For details on how to buy tickets, keep listening. Or call 818 843 5050. Don't forget. K Rock's giving away party in the pit tickets and backstage passes all week long. K Rock's seventh annual, almost acoustic Christmas.